Welcome to episode 45 Marketry. As you can see, we're in a new location for the beginning of the video. This is uh, my room, and this is the uh, wall of portraits, as I call it. In today's video, we're going to be demonstrating the uh, way I do marquetry. There's two ways I know how to do marquetry. With the scroll saw and with an exacto or scalpel knife. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do it with the scroll saw. So let's get started. The piece of marquetry that we're making today is going to look like this. It's just a, a simple leaf pattern and I uh, made a little border for it around the outside of it. So it's nothing uh, too big for this project today and I'm just going to go over the uh, fundamentals and the procedure I use to uh, create this piece of marquetry. The basic stuff we'll need today is uh, as shown the uh, needle nose pliers and that is to put together the scalpel blade onto it that way it's, uh, you don't cut yourself and uh, of course you'll need the scalpel I have blue painters tape and that is to uh, well I'll show you what that's used for actually gum tape and this is uh, activated by water so it's not really a sticky until you run it through some water and I'll show you what that's used for this uh, brass wire brush and now I'll show you what uh, I use that for then uh, some sort of straight edge to uh, use as a guide when you're cutting the veneer and I have this uh, just a uh, cheap self-healing uh, mat that I cut on and uh, just get at Walmart for about 10 bucks and uh, uh, that just helps cut the veneer. There's many more supplies that you'll need throughout this process of uh, creating this uh, piece of marquetry we're making. But those are just the uh, beginning things that we'll need. So uh, let's get started. The process I learned is uh, by Paul Search and uh, this is a marquetry DVD that I got off of his website searchwoodworker.com and that's how you uh, spell it if you want to go to that website and uh, I just uh, watched this video I also have one on veneering and it just shows how to do marquetry and other uh, veneering stuff this is a pattern that uh, I got in one of the kits that I bought from Paul Search and uh, I'm going to be uh, doing just the uh, leaf just a part of that so I made a couple copies of this so I can make uh, several pieces of marquetry from it and I uh, can just use it to practice on. So originally the pattern had it going up and down, or actually it had it going uh, underneath, excuse me, but I think it looks better if it's going like that. Like this is. So uh, another name that uh, Paul called this is a uh, cartoon. So I don't know if uh, you vocabulary nerds out there uh, care if it's called a pattern or a cartoon or plan or whatever. So this is the uh, simple leaf that we're going to be doing. Now uh, the process using the scroll saw uh, to create everything you have to create a packet and it's all the veneers inside of one packet and you cut them all out and when you sort through the pieces you'll uh, put each piece where it's supposed to go so I'll show you how to create a packet I have two thin pieces of cardboard that will serve as my packet uh, pieces and what I'll do is I will spray adhesive the cartoon onto the uh, front of the cardboard in a, a relatively centered spot so I'll be right back with you after I spray adhesive that to the uh, piece of cardboard I'm back from spraying the uh, cartoon onto the piece of cardboard. Now with the two pieces of cardboard, what I want to do is uh, create the packet. So I'll use the blue painter's tape. And create the packet by placing the two pieces of cardboard on top of each other and then uh, placing the blue painter's tape like so wrapping it around it and then I'll cut off the uh, excess on the sides and 
and that creates the uh, packet actual the actual packet because now it's like a hinge because the blue painters tape getting hinge open and closed so the next step we need to do is create or uh, select the colors that we're going to use for the uh, work now for the packet all I'm going to focus on is the outside color the background the stem and the two leaves I will use the uh, border later and uh, I ain't gonna put that in the packet that's what comes later so for the uh, colors I'm gonna choose a maple color for the background a uh, walnut color for this and then this is actually just dyed green the uh, other color it's not the natural wood so I'll select those and show you that I've got my uh, piece of maple here I'll put it inside the packet and what's important here is the areas that are going to be cut on I want to put the gum tape at that way uh, again this veneer is very thin and it can snap and break and this will help it from not breaking so since this uh, gum tape is water based or water activated I have a wet uh, paper towel here that I'll run the gum tape across to activate it and I'll tape it down So let's make sure I get a uh, plenty of water on it. If you don't have enough water, it will uh, peel up on you. So you want to make sure you have plenty. Now what I want to do is uh, take some pieces of blue painter's tape and uh, hold it in there just by uh, taping it where the uh, joint is so it's not going to go anywhere and it will close like that now with this just because it's a little excess I'm going to use my scalpel and cut around it and I'll be right back with you so now that I got that uh, background trimmed to size, I'm going to uh, put another piece of blue tape on it just so it doesn't lift up on me. The next two pieces of veneer I want to do is for the leaves. One of the leaves is going to the right, and one of the leaves is going to the left. And I don't know how well you can see that, but the grain is going the uh, opposite directions on them as well. So what I want to do is have one of the grains going that way, and then the other going the opposite way so what I'll do is put the uh, piece of veneer where it's going to be at and of course I'll gum tape the whole surface of it because the point of the leaf will uh, break off if you don't and uh, that will just make for problems later on so I'll put gum tape all over these pieces and I'll put them where the uh, packet will be and uh, if you need to reference make sure that they will go where the leaves are on the actual cartoon when you close it so I'll be right back with you after I do that alright I now have the packet all together and I have both pieces of uh, green veneer one going that way and one going that way the background and then the piece for the stem and uh, you always want to double check when you close it that uh, they'll be in line and they'll uh, be where they're supposed to be I put gum tape on all of them in case we're in an area that I make a turn it won't split out. Now this blue tape just holds everything in place. So what I can do now is uh, just blue tape around it. That way it stays all together and I'll be right back with you. Now that is the uh, completed packet. And uh, I'll show you what to do next. Now as you can see when we cut this out, uh, there's no way to really enter from the edge of it. So we'll have to make an entry hole somewhere on the, uh, I did the stem and that's the easiest place to hide. So what I have here is, uh, I don't know the exact name of it, but I call it a super sharp pointy thingy. And uh, you chuck it up in your drill and you will uh, use it to pierce a hole to insert your blade in the scroll saw. 
Now, why don't you just use a regular drill bit? Well, one, this is skinnier than the you know average 16th inch drill bit, but uh, this does not remove material. It just separates the fibers in the uh, veneer, and it will uh, close back up later on, so it hides the hole better. So I have it chucked up in my drill, and it doesn't really take much to actually uh, drill the hole. So I'll do it at a uh, point in the stem, and just. And you can see that you're through. And now you have a small hole that will be easy to hide. And uh, it will close back up when you have all the glue and everything in it. And I'll show you how that will work too. So now we're ready to go over to the scroll saw and cut it out. Alright, I'm out here at the workshop and I'm at the uh, scroll saw as you can see. Uh, the uh, kit that I uh, got for the marketry, it came with number two blades. But uh, I find uh, using just some puzzle blades work just as good, so that's what I use. And uh, puzzle blades have a thin saw curve, so uh, it leaves uh, less uh, curve when you're putting the pieces back together. So uh, that's what works out for me. I want to run the saw at about 2, and uh, this is the DeWalt. So if you're uh, running that, run it pretty slow. And uh, we're going to begin our cuts. And uh, go very slow at it. There ain't no hurry at it. When you have a uh, cut complete, I just use a little pointer thing to uh, poke everything through. That way you don't have to remove the blade. And uh, just be careful that it all stays into one stack because you'll need to uh, do that later. Also, if you're using very small pieces, you might want to make a, yourself a zero clearance system on the uh, scroll saw by just putting oh, a piece of tape where the blade is. And by the way, a uh, Put the uh, stem or whatever you're cutting off to the side and keep it all in one stack. And we can continue on cutting. And uh, these pieces have vein cuts so I'm going to uh, go ahead and do those first and then cut around it. That way I have something to hold on to it. Now we are done with the cutting. And then I just inserted everything back to uh, where it was before I cut it out. And I'll uh, take this inside to the house now and I'll uh, show you what to do with the uh, pieces. We're in here from the workshop now and we can uh, just uh, take apart this packet. Well actually first we'll push the uh, pieces through and get them all separated and then I'll take apart the packet. When you open up the packet you'll find everything is in sort of a jumbled mess. And all you need is this uh, background piece, so you can remove everything, be careful peeling up the tape, and uh, just get to this uh, maple colored background piece. Now what we're left with is the uh, background piece and all the uh, pieces here. Now you want to sort through here and only you only need the ones that you, uh, are, uh, that you need for the like stem and leaves. So we have our three pieces, the uh, two leaves and then the uh, stem there. Now at this point what you would do is uh, get ready to do what's called sand shading but I'm not going to do that for this project just because I don't have the uh, supplies for it and uh, I'll just, this is just a tutorial of basic uh, marquetry work here. And uh, what sand shading is is you'll peel up the uh, gum tape on it of course and uh, you heat up sand in say a skillet or anything over top of a stove and you dip the piece into the sand and that sand is hot so it will uh, shade the areas that you want shaded 
So that's just a way to shade the pieces to make it look better, but again, I'm not going to do that. So for this, actually, what you want to do is uh, just get this piece, and I want to flip it over and tape over top of this whole hole area with blue painter's tape. And I'll show you the reason I'm doing that. You'll take the each piece that where it goes and place it and the blue painters tape will hold it in the area So now the uh, pieces are inside of the uh, uh, whole background thing because they're stuck to the blue painter's tape there. Now what I'm going to do next is uh, trim up this piece of uh, maple here to the exact size I want it. Alright, so I have the uh, background piece uh, trimmed up to size. Now what I'm going to do is uh, put the border background on it. What I'm going to do for that is just flip this piece over. and apply blue painters tape to the outer edge make sure you don't stick the whole piece down to the uh, surface here so it will have a, a blue tape border that's sticky on there I'm going to decide on a uh, border color and uh, by the way, the uh, band around here, uh, if the you call it the border trim, whatever, but uh, Paul on his DVD, he calls it Felecte or whatever that is, but uh, it's just a thin banding that you'll put around it. So I'll just uh, use my straight edge and line it up and cut uh, thin strips using the uh, exacto or. Uh, scalpel. So I'll cut those thin strips and I'll be right back with you. So to apply them to this, I'll zoom in here for you. So what you do is you just apply the uh, Fleck Day as close as you can, butt it up to the edge there. And then uh, to make the corner real nice, you still uh, butt it up here, but you'll overlap the other piece. And I'll show you how to make a uh, 45 angle cut there with the uh, exacto knife or scalpel whichever you're using so I have all the uh, pieces on there now I'll show you this corner here how you create the 45 cut is you will take, I don't know how well that's focused but you'll take the point of your scalpel to this corner and line the whole blade up with this corner and chop until you hear a couple clicks that way it goes through both veneers and then you should be able to pull both of them away and it will leave it with a nice 45 angle there so I'm going to do it to the rest of the corners and I'll be right back with you now I have the uh, whole thing uh, all the veneer done I'm doing and you can also add another border around that and make it more decorative but this is uh, basically it for this I'm going to trim off all the blue tape on the edges and I'll show you what to do after that alright I have all the uh, blue painters tape uh, cut off of it and it's still on the back of it so uh, that will actually stay now what I want to do now is uh, this is a couple steps before glue up I'm going to cover the entire surface of this with gum tape and uh, the reason actually why we use blue tape for this side is after uh, we get that side with gum tape we'll peel this up and blue tape is uh, less stickier than masking tape is and it won't uh, tear up the veneer as bad or at all actually hopefully so uh, we're gonna cover that whole side with gum tape and that will keep everything in line and hold it all together for when we do the glue up so I'll cover that all with the uh, gum tape and I'll show you how to do that. 
We still have our uh, rag that's soaked in water. We'll just take a piece of uh, gum tape here and uh, run it all the way through the uh, water. That way it gets uh, nice and soaked. Because if it's not super stuck down, you're going to be in trouble later. Now I know that because uh, the very first time I've ever tried this, it uh, sort of went to disaster when uh, it came time for the gum tape because it wasn't sticky enough. It's what uh, holds everything together when you're getting ready to glue it up. So now that this is uh, all in gum tape and I'll let that actually dry because it's fairly wet. And also if you're going to uh, glue this up I suggest you do it all in one motion. I mean uh, the gum tape since it's wet it will cause this to actually bow. So you want to make sure that you do all the gum tape and glue up in one uh, process. So that's in gum tape. Now I'm going to remove all the masking or the uh, blue painters tape, excuse me, and uh, peel it all up and make sure that none of the pieces come out with it. If they do, just uh, stick it down and make sure you don't break them off. So I'm going to peel up all the uh, the blue painters tape now. Okay, now the fun part: gluing it up. Uh, by the way, while I was gone, I cut a piece of uh, MDF to size, and uh, he. Uh, Paul that I watched on the video he uses this MDF uh, and uh, that is a good piece because it doesn't warp or anything like that and it is the most sturdy piece if you use like birch ply or something with voids in it it can mess up the veneer later on so use something that's somewhat sturdy and the MDF seems to work good and it's also cheap the glue I'm using is a dry resin glue and you have to mix it with water and uh, it's actually pretty easy to work with so what you gotta do is when you open it up it's this brown powder and you just uh, have two cups one with water and one without and you uh, pour just a little in there a little goes somewhat far on this and you have that in there and with your water you won't need that much actually but you just pour in a little bit and you stir it until it creates a thick paste and I actually uh, put a little bit too much for at the beginning but it will uh, actually it's perfect amount right away but you should actually uh, use less than that at the beginning You can add a little bit of powder to it. That's what I'm going to do to get the uh, consistency back. Okay, so that's about the consistency you want. It's uh, fairly liquidy. And it's hard to see at that angle, I know. But Alright, now what you want to do is, he uses a roller. I'm just going to use a foam brush. And I'll just take a... Hold on. And I'll just take this and pour it onto the piece of MDF. You don't want to uh, flood it because uh, if you use too much it will go through the veneer. If you use too little it won't even glue it. And it takes a little bit of this uh, glue to soak the brush too so keep that in mind when you're working with it. And this does have a uh, a little bit of working time but you want to make sure you have your vacuum press and all that ready and everything beforehand so this actually has plenty of glue on it right now so I mixed a little bit too much or if you have something else that you're going up also you can keep it all mixed up so that's a, I'm almost going to add a little bit more to it So that should work fine. Now what you'll do is you'll take your piece of uh, 
marquetry. Marquetry surface down with the gum tape facing up. You'll place it on there and make sure that the uh, everything is staying together at this point because <clears throat> no turning back once you get this uh, piece on there. And it's not going to stick right away. So I use some uh, clear box tape and uh, tape around it. So I have all that uh, taped up and it's on the piece of MDF. The next step is to uh, introduce the process of all the uh, clamping calls and all that for putting it into the press. What you're going to need is of course see a piece of marquetry, a uh, piece of the clear polyethylene plastic and that will keep the uh, squeeze out from uh, sticking to the other pieces so you want to use that a piece of canvas and uh, put that on the marquetry side because that will uh, keep the uh, it will get into there and make sure everything is pressed down that's it's probably not a necessity but that's just what I learned put a clamp and call on the top and a clamp and call on the bottom and you are ready to go into the press alright I apologize that the video cut off right there uh, the camera just died and it's all charged up now I have this all clamped up and it's already uh, dried it's uh, <clears throat> I let it dry for about an hour but uh, of course uh, you don't have to let it dry for that long it'll dry in about uh, 10 minutes and uh, the uh, glue that I use, the dry resin uh, glue, it uh, activates better with heat. So if you put under a uh, heated blanket or something, it will uh, work better for you. So uh, sorry again for it cut off. If you want to see the uh, process of the vacuum press, watch episode 44 and you'll get the uh, whole detail on that. So now what we can do is open this package up and see what we got. Okay, we can take off all the uh, parts, the uh, canvas, the two clamping coals. Then we can unwrap the piece of polyethylene plastic. Remember we have the uh, clear box tape that we can remove. Alright, so I removed all the uh, clear box tape from it and uh, you're still left with all the uh, gum tape as you remember before we did the glue up. There's two ways you can deal with that to remove it. One, you can do what's called scuff sanding, or just sanding to remove the uh, material. But I'll do that later on. What you can do is just take water, and since the gum tape was activated with water, you can reactivate it since it's dry. You can reactivate it with water, and the gum will get activated, and you can just use a scraper or something and scrape it right off and it'll take a little while to uh, make sure it's activated but you just scrape it this isn't a very sharp scraper but you get the gist so I'm going to uh, make sure this is all saturated and don't be afraid to put too much water on there and just uh, scrape it until it all comes off. Alright, now they're starting to look a little bit the same. Now, uh, this one is the one that I just did actually. Uh, I'm going to let it actually dry out a little bit and then I'll uh, uh, do some sanding on it and I'll show you what to do uh, after I do that. Alright, I gave this uh, piece of marquetry some time to dry from uh, using the water to peel up the uh, gum tape on it. And as you can see, I made a repair that was the uh, stem. It wasn't a uh, it sort of broke off on me when I was doing something with it, so I just uh, added some sawdust and some super glue in there. So the next step in this is to uh, sand, and I will use a block with a piece of sandpaper around it, and I'll just uh, sand over the surface until it's completely smooth. Then after that, what you would do is uh, use shellac or any sort of sealer to uh, seal the uh, marquetry, but I don't have any, so I'll just go straight to the clear coat. And uh, this is just, uh, again, a... Uh, tutorial of the basic of uh, marquetry on the scroll saw so uh, I'll go ahead and be right back with you after I do the uh, sanding and the clear coat. 
All right, I'm back. I uh, sanded it, gave it a nice uh, clear coat, actually, two of them. You can see it shines a little bit. Actually turned out pretty good. The uh, spot I had to fill in, I ended up using some walnut sawdust, and uh, it made it a little bit darker, but you know what? Nature's not all one color, so it should be all right. I uh, gave it a nice burning in the bottom, and uh, I marked that one CS because it is the one on the uh, video. And that way I know the difference there. This one's the uh, first one I've done. So if you compare them, they're uh, pretty much the same. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Again, and uh, this is the technique using the uh, scroll saw to do it. Using the stack cut and everything else. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, that's uh, the final product. Hope you enjoyed this video on the marquetry. For uh, other ways to do it, you can uh, search YouTube. There's uh, plenty of videos out there. And uh, this way is using the scroll saw again. And other ways is using the knives like the X-Acto or Scalpel. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm Dustin. And I'm Dylan. We'll see you next time on Country Scroller.